Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And this is going to be one that I'm going to get heat for. We're going to talk about the 10 champions that come to my mind when I think about champions in Raid Shadow Legends that have been power crept over the last year or two. Champions that used to be regarded as insanely strong and now either because of how the game has evolved or other champions that have been added to the game and maybe they're not quite what they used to be. So that's what we're going to discuss in this one. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so remember, you heard me, right? Uh, before you start typing in the comment section, I'm not saying these champions are bad. I'm just saying they've been power crept a little bit and maybe not be at the same tier that they once were. That's all I'm saying. And the first one kills me. I'm going to start with my boy, my channel art, Bad Alcazar. Obviously, Bad Alcazar is still an amazing progression champion and going to be great in certain teams. But back in the day, th this guy was regarded as a god tier champion and used everywhere by everyone that had him. And I think with the addition of other cleansers coming to the game, there's a lot more of them now. There's a lot more poisoners, a lot more cleansers, and a lot more healers in the game that I think it has kind of had the side effect of Bad El still being good, but not quite the god that he once was. Then next, we've got Valkyrie. Now, uh, this, back in the day, uh, I had a version of my Raid Shadow Legends tier list that had Valkyrie as a number one, the best legendary in the game. And this was a pretty widespread belief amongst a lot of people in the community that Valkyrie was the most coveted champion because of the shields and the counterattack and also being a pain by throwing off teams in the arena. She was absolutely insane in all content progression, end game, all of that. I used her in my counterattack uh, clan boss team for like a year. So Valkyrie used to be queen of raid and now she is mostly just a solid pull a good champion but not quite the number one goddess of raid that she was back in the day a couple years ago then the tried and true dracomorph now uh dracomorph uh was actually a trash can horrible champion who got buffed into relevancy and became and instantly became one of the best champions overnight. And it was because of the insane damage he could crank out while also having the three turn cooldown that can't hit weak, placing both a weaken and a decreased defense. Now, Draco was so good, there was literally a conspiracy around it called Draco Gate back in the day, where a content creator uh, went all in, uh, buying a bunch of packs and YOLOing for a Draco 10X and did not get him. And then he started raging and, and, and complaining to Plarium and, and it was just a bunch of madness going on in the community. But anyway, since then, the game has added a lot of champions that place the weekend and defense break. Well, not a lot, but but it used to be like, you know, like one or two. And now we've got, uh, you know, some, some more options that can kind of slide in to the role of Draco. So still obviously very solid and, and a good pull and a good general champion uh, for all sorts of different content, but not quite that like top five legendary maybe that he was regarded as back in the day. Then the thigh queen herself, Trunda. Now, Trunda uh, does have one of the hardest nuking abilities in the game here in Forge Rhythm because if you do not do the stun, you're going to get two hits, which basically turns this thing into like a 6.0 multiplier. Now, Trunda is still amazing. The, only, the, the, the reason I say maybe Power Crypt a little bit is because we've had a lot of really good options added to the game. We had Baron get buffed. We had the Nutcracker added to the game. We've had uh, champions like Morta Macabre with, uh, with Stone Skin become a damage dealing option. And we've had some really good DPS options slot up into the game. It used to be like everybody used Trunda or Rodos and they called it a day. But now because of additions coming to raid, it means that Trunda doesn't have as much of a stranglehold on the DPS meta as she once did. The fifth one I'm going to talk about here is Tervald. Now, uh, Tervald is just a little bit too niche nowadays. He's like a Barbarian's Faction Crypt damage dealer and an unkillable composition damage dealer for uh, the Demon Lord. The problem is that uh, you know he, that, that role used to be a lot more scarce. Your god to your damage dealers would have been like, you know, Draco and Tervald or something. But they have added, I mean, they've added like Anax and, and Farrakhan and different like epics that can really do well in some of these Demon Lord scenarios. So Tervald it can still hit insanely hard, but his value in terms of the scarcity of his role has really 
been diminished because they've added a lot more uh, options that can slot into those unkillable compositions. And then also, uh, a lot of really smart people in the community have found different ways to build different compositions, and there's just more options available to players, which kind of knocked down Turvald's overall value a little bit. And in that same vein, I would talk about Sir Nicholas a little bit. Uh, you know, he used to be uh, one of those champions that were an option to get you in the door for unkillable compositions and an absolute god tier legendary amazing champion for early and mid game content now there is a you know th there have been a lot more really solid options added to the game um he's still obviously amazing as, as a void legendary uh to help new play like, like any new player that pulls sir nicholas is going to be super excited about it uh but because of a lot more options added to the game i do see him slide down and get used a lot less often uh so he doesn't have kind of quite the power uh in the raid meta that he once did and then I think this guy has fallen off a lot. Miscreated Monster. This guy, a lot of people thought he was like the best epic in the game for a while. And now I really never see him used or ever talked about. Um, and I think it's because there has been so many more options brought to the game for shielding. And we also see that the spider meta, once you get past level 20, it kind of shifted to an HP burn meta. So I think the way that people play his most valuable spot, which was the spider, I think that changed. And I think with them also adding more shielders, it really knocked down Miscreated Monster from being a hyper special, amazing champion everybody was looking for to now mostly just a solid epic. Another epic I want to talk about is Skull Crown. And now, uh, I think the biggest power creep to Skull Crown was honestly Genbo the Dishonored being added to the game. I think Genbo uh, being a void epic that can hit almost as hard as Skull Crown really diminished her value kind of in the mid game of the arena meta. And Genbo being able to kind of self buff his own attack and, uh, and ignore unkillable, he also counters Skull Crown. So there's a, a, a lot more of an achievable option to deal with Skull Crown so she isn't quite as annoying. So people that have Genbo can just slot him in and nuke down Skull Crown. So still very solid and great early game champion for the arena. But I think that the introduction of Genbo definitely power crept Skull Crown. And then uh, like we were talking about uh, with Trunda, we got a lot more um, additions to the game just for damage dealing in general. So both of those things definitely had an effect on Skull Crown's overall power within Raid. Then next, I would talk about Tormin the Cold, and uh, he is still really good, and I actually use him a lot And when I'm farming Classic Arena or even in Tag Team Arena and stuff. I think I'm a little bit more uh, higher on Tormin than the overall raid community, but back in the day, really everybody would just use speed teams. You'd have your Arbiter, your Wissandra, whatever, and you would just do a speed team and you would nuke. So Tormin was amazing in that context because he was kind of put into the game to help combat raid just becoming a speed uh go first uh and, and nuke everything down game he was kind of put in there to shake up the meta and when he was added to the game he was ridiculous he was a god to your champion they've had to adjust him like three or four times and now he's just kind of a solid option but there's a lot uh more tanky teams and there's a lot more ways to kind of play around tormund and things that have been introduced to the game that make him a lot less powerful than he used to be but honestly i still value tormund pretty high and i think i'm a little bit uh, higher on him than the raid community in general. And then the 10th one that I'm going to talk about here is Vizier Ovalis. Now, uh, when he was added to the game, he had a ridiculously cracked A1. This triple hitter that can be booked up to a 50% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs by one turn. So when this guy was added to the game, he was just an instant lock god tier champion for the Demon Lord, but we've seen the rise of these unkillable compositions and all these different options to do well in the Demon Lord. So kind of that one area of the game that he was regarded as insanely god tier in has been diminished a lot. He's not really used in PvP or anything, so his niche has kind of been stripped from him, and it really caused a power creep effect on Vizier to not be nearly as highly regarded as he once was. So yeah, when I sat down to think to myself, you know, if, I, if I'm trying to think of like the top 10 most power crept champions, these were kind of the first 10 that came to my mind. It was uh, Bad L, Valkyrie, Draco, 
Turunda, Turvald, Cernic, Skullcrown, Miscreated Monster, Tormund, and Vizier. So I uh, would love to hear your picks down below. Which champion should have been on this list that I left out? Who do you think has been power kept the most? And then also maybe who do you disagree with me the most? I always enjoy that back and forth from, uh, from the viewers and getting your input as well. So remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Rage Shadow Legends content. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.